Let's go back to our simulation of laminar flow over a flat plate and add the effect of heating or cooling. And this case is called laminar flat plate convection. As before, we have um, a free stream coming in and we'll take that velocity still to be one meter per second. But now we also have to consider the temperature in the free stream. We will take that to be 400 Kelvin. And the temperature at the wall is different from the temperature of the free stream. And we will take that to be 300 Kelvin. And due to this temperature difference, we are going to get a thermal boundary layer, which is similar to the velocity boundary layer. And within the thermal boundary layer, the temperature will transition from the value at the wall to nine to nine percent of the free stream temperature value. That means we have an additional unknown variable to solve for temperature and we need an additional governing equations plus the associated boundary conditions. One fundamental question to address is does heating change the velocity and pressure field? And we can see that when we look at the governing equations in a moment. The thermal boundary layer thickness is governed by the Prandtl number, similar to the velocity boundary layer thickness being governed by the Reynolds number. And we'll take the Prandtl number to be one, and I, I like ones, and I'll take k to also be one watts per meter per Kelvin, which means I need to specify Cp, the uh, specific heated constant pressure to be 10 to the power of four joules per kg per Kelvin. And that's because mu is 10 to the power of minus four. So that'll give us a parental number of one. This doesn't correspond to any real fluid. What we are interested in are these, uh, the values of the non-dimensional parameters. In terms of the governing equations, we still have the governing equations from before and our unknowns were u, v, and p. And now we have an additional unknown, t of x, y, and our additional equation comes from conservation of energy, which is first law of thermodynamics applied to a vanishingly small chunk of fluid or fluid element. And this is one form of the, of the energy equation. Um, and that term is related to the change in internal energy of the fluid element that's related to the heat uh, transferred in by conduction, that's related to the pressure work, and that's related to the viscous uh, work, the, the work done by viscous force, which is called viscous dissipation. And now we can see that the energy equation is uncoupled because density is constant, so we can still solve for velocity and pressure from the first three equations, and then once using that velocity and pressure field, we can solve for the temperature. If density is varying, then these equations become coupled. Otherwise, they're uncoupled, which means that um, if, you know, the, the addition of, of heating or cooling doesn't change my velocity or, or uh, pressure field. The assumptions we saw before would still hold, and we are also assuming that we have constant properties. So this equation, you know, in this form, you're assuming that Cp and K are not functions of, of temperature. And we need to bring in some additional boundary conditions because we have um, an additional PDE at, you know, where we had the velocity boundary condition. Now we also need to specify the temperature, which will be just the here it'll just be the free stream temperature, here it'll be just the free stream temperature, and here it'll just be the temperature at the wall. And this boundary condition, there's nothing additional to specify. So that's a change in the boundary conditions. So that's a quick overview of how the mathematical model changes when you have heating or cooling. And let's quickly take a look at how the, the numerical solution strategy changes, and the answer is it doesn't. Um, so now, in addition to finding the velocity and pressure at the cell centers, we also need to find 
the temperature at the cell centers. And when you go from the boundary value problem system of algebraic equations by a control volume balance, um, the solver will also do a control volume balance for energy for each cell and get an additional equation. So you have one additional algebraic equation per cell and and when you invert it, you get the cell center values of u, v, p, t, and then that can be post-processed, and you can get t of x, y, and so on. And this also doesn't change this whole kind of numerical solution strategy uh, view shown over here, and still you're getting nonlinear algebraic equations, so you have to linearize and, and solve them iteratively. So that's a quick overview of the, the numerical solution strategy, how it um, changes, um, and what about hand calculations? That's the last element of pre-analysis. Now for a panel number of one, we expect that the thermal boundary layer thickness is the same, would be the same as the velocity boundary layer thickness. And that is because the um, the Prandtl number is the same, it is a ratio of the diffusivity of, of momentum to, um, to heat. And, and both are the same now with the Prandtl number of one. And earlier we saw that the velocity bound layer thickness, we estimated it to be 0.05 meters over here at the end of the plate. And so we expect the thermal boundary layer thickness to be of, of, of that order. So that's something we can check in the fluent solution. The muscle number is defined this way, uh, hx over k, where h is the surface um, heat transfer coefficient, and which gives us, which is related to the heat flux at the wall. So if I have the surface heat transfer coefficient and I take the difference between the wall temperature and the free stream and multiply it by h, I should get the, the heat flux at the wall. Now in the, you know, once we have the numerical solution, we will have our, our, you know, a solution from bound layer theory. We have QW and we have, you know, TW and T infinity, which are inputs. So we can calculate H and from that we can calculate the Nusselt number. And there's a Nusselt number correlation that is uh, presented by textbooks. And this comes from using boundary layer similarity solution similar to the uh, the similarity of the velocity profiles, and this is the correlation with the, the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. And here the Reynolds number, uh, the length scale is based on x. So we can, um, co you know, we can run the, the simulation at different Reynolds numbers and Prandtl numbers and, and check that the, the correlation we get, you know, how well it matches this particular correlation. So that's, uh, that's a quick set of expected results from hand calculations.